your ability to keep a church is an indicator of the development of your character. Church will force you to be patient. Church will force you to be wise. Church will force you to be holy. As a matter of fact, being a pastor is a license to go to heaven. Because you know, people will scrutinize your life so much that you will be compelled to do the right things. And they are helping you to go to heaven. So all the criticism, all the attack and everything, one day you will start thanking all the people that used to attack you, all the people that used to criticize you. But the ones who you call the enemies sometimes are your friends. And that brings me to my topic today. Beware of Hananiah and Shemaiah. Beware of Hananiah and Shemaiah. And very soon you will understand. Hananiah and Shemaiah are the people who tell you what you want to hear. Hananiah and Shemaiah. They are false prophets who will tell you what you want to hear. I will start this message by telling you what the true prophet will tell you. The prophet, the one God called, Jeremiah, the authentic prophet. Jeremiah, the one you believe in. I know many people, many of you here, you, you believe in Jeremiah. How many of you believe in Jeremiah and Jeremiah's prophecies? But I can tell you, if you were alive in the days of Jeremiah, you would say that man is a false prophet. A guy who all of a sudden takes a yoke. He takes wood and makes yoke and put it around his neck. And he's walking about telling the whole of Israel and telling the whole of Judah, you will be in captivity for 70 years. Immediately he said, this is a false prophet. In the first place, look at his appearance. Must he put a yoke around his neck to prophesy? Can't he prophesy by just speaking the word? And I like these people who, who out of um, prophetic, prophetic incompetence, always want to hide behind the word. Yeah, preach and teach the word and stop the weird things. Well, Jeremiah was a weird one. I like the prophet who God told him. He said, take your underwear, your supporter, Pyoto, go and hide it at the riverside. Put it under a rock. After some time, remove it and show it to the whole of Israel. This is how corrupt you are. Until you can imagine, say prophet, and I'm going to know with Pyoto. This is the way you are corrupt. Everybody will say, this is a false prophet. This is a weird, vulgar prophet. Now, this is a prophet, Jeremiah. He takes yoke, put it around his neck. And he said, the people of Israel are going to be in captivity. The people of Judah will be in captivity for 70 years. He prophesied there will be 70 years. And today's hard-hearted believers don't want to hear things like that. Thou saith the Lord of hosts, said Jeremiah, the God of Israel, unto to all that are carried away, unto all that are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. So God is saying, I allowed you to be carried from Jerusalem to Babylon. And I'm sure you say this is a false prophet. How can they say my sickness is coming from God? How can they say somebody died and it's coming from God? How can they say my business collapsed and it's coming from God? Can you imagine you've gone to a pastor, pray for me, and, and the pastor says, you are the cause of the breaking down of your marriage. You are the one that broke down your marriage. We, we will say he's accusing us. This is the accuser of the brethren. And he said, God is behind it. It is God that brought you down to the place you are. God allowed you to be carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Now go on. Build you houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons. And give your daughters to husbands. That they may bear sons and daughters. That you may be increased there but not decreased. Now, I preached this thing from a positive perspective yesterday. But the negative dimension of the thing is that he is saying that you will be there for a long time. So don't make up your mind you are coming back so quickly. You will be there for 70 years in the captivity. 
So build houses and dwell in them. You will be there for many, many years. You will be there for many years. Many years you will be there. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit thereof. And seek the peace of the city in which you dwell. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace but not of evil. I will bring you back one day. But it will not be until 70 years. Now this is the prophet of God speaking. Look at verse 9 and 10. For they prophesied falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For that saith the Lord. After 70 years be accomplished, I will visit you and perform my good word concerning you in causing you to return to this place. You will return, but it will be after 70 years. 70 years. Ladies and gentlemen, we may be here for a long time. And that is why, if during the COVID, God gave you the grace for online ministry, you don't want to joke with your online ministry at all. Because for a long time, online ministry will be going on. So you notice something. Normally when we do a convention, Bethesda, this whole place is packed. People are sitting on the compound everywhere. This year, it may not be like that. And then... And that's because many people still are not comfortable to go out just like that. And then the other thing is, a lot of dynamics have shifted. The dynamics have shifted. So, online ministry has become very much part of what we are doing. Online ministry has become very, part of, very much part of what we are doing. And that is why every single church must understand that if you take your online ministry for granted, you are just killing your ministry. Everything is in the air. Everything is leaving the ground and going to the air. Buildings are becoming high rise. Everything. These days you can't travel by road to many places. Since we started going to Accra by air, I don't know the last time I drove from Bogatanga to Accra. I will go to Tambale and take the plane. Even business. If you are doing business in Bogatanga and you don't know how to do it online, you are going to be in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is changing so fast. The world is changing so fast. The world is changing so fast. And I came to tell you, build you houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens. And some of the gardens you have to plant are electronic gardens, television gardens. So you see, many times in your selfish nature, you just think, you are helping somebody or you are doing something to help somebody no my aim as a blacksmith is to manufacture a weapon but you as my children must take that weapon and go to war with the weapon but here is the case the father creates the weapon but the children will not take the weapon and fight and when they don't pick up the weapon and you are a father and you are getting angry then they turn around and they are offended and they are angry. Do you have the right as an irresponsible son to be angry when a father is getting agitated? Because with this 60 ultimate Dano who say I now hear you. You are pushing and you are saying, So who am I building this for? Who am I building this for? You will build a house for them. When they take over, they say they have no money to buy electricity. They can't buy power. And they'll tell you, you did not leave inheritance for them to buy the power. Huh. So here is Jeremiah. You will be in this state for 70 years. So you know, I'm well informed that the world has changed. What I do online and on television is very important. If I don't see beyond this building and I keep following this building and keep following this building, sometimes it is not the fault of the people that they behave the way they are behaving. At times, it is God shifting your focus. And you must understand what God has called you to do. You 
must understand it as a pastor. So Jeremiah has called the people and Jeremiah is telling them, you know what? You will be in this captivity for long. Some of you will die. In fact, he was saying, this whole generation may die because 70 years is enough for everybody to die. It's enough for everybody to be sick. It's enough for them to use the sword to kill some of the people. It's enough for farming to kill some of the people that are in Jerusalem and that are in Judah. This captivity will be for long. I think we all hope that somebody could tell us that this whole thing will end now. But maybe that may be just deception. Things may not change now. You lost your church building. But things may not change now. Believe God. Build e houses. E congregation. Get, get, get there on television, on radio. Do something about your ministry. We may be here for a long time. And while the man of God, the prophet is prophesied, there will always be pretenders. So you see, prophets and pretenders. There will always be pretenders who will tell you, oh, this thing is very short. We love the kind of people who will tell us the thing is going to be short. It will not last. It won't be long. So while the man of God is prophesied, a certain prophet by the name of Hananiah and that name Hananiah means Jah has favored. Nyamia favored Mpunye. Jah has favored. Jehovah or Yahweh has favored Hananiah. Hananiah was the prophet. Jeremiah was prophesying. Hananiah came and took the yoke from his neck. And broke it and when he broke it he began to prophesy he said this captivity is not going to be for 70 years the captivity will be for just two years the captivity is going to be for just two years and I know ladies and gentlemen whenever it comes to prophecy many of you believe in the prophecy that is easy the prophecy which is from God Many of us normally say it's a false prophecy. False. Now, if a prophet comes to you and says you are going to die, ah, that's a false prophecy. Fire is going to fall in your house. Hey, false prophecy. You will not live to be 50 years. Hey, false prophecy. This sickness will kill you. False prophecy. Then another one comes to you and says you will not die. Uh -uh, these are the true men of God. And I've heard it in Ghana again and again and again. The one that prophesies what they don't want to hear, they brand you a false prophet. The one who says it is well with you, they say these are the men of God. These are the true men of God. But hey, beware of Hananiah and beware of Shemaiah. They will tell you things you want to hear, but that is not the truth. Listen to me. Many of us are listening to the people we shouldn't listen to. Now, so, the shoes you should wear, the shirt you should wear, the food you should eat, the real good ones you don't like. It. Let me tell you this. Even good wives, sometimes they don't look nice. A good wife may not be nice looking. And that is why our Christian brothers don't get the good wives. Because a nice looking wife may not be a wise thinking wife. Can I say that? A nice looking wife may not be a wise thinking wife. And a brother see, when they are choosing wife, instead of thinking, they are looking. The day Adam looked and said, bone of my bones, look at his end. Maybe that day he should have thought. He should have thought that mami ne lumi ene de. A mango no obedi adi ipe. Somebody said, how do you know it is mango? Me, I don't believe it's apple. Because apple, me, I don't like apple. Apple can never tempt me. If you want to tempt me, mango. 
But you know what, people? The things that are very good, many times they don't taste nice. And many times you don't like them. The things that are bad, false prophecy, you like it. Oh, you are fornicating, they tell you to beware. You marry a second wife, they tell you God is in this marriage. You divorce your husband, they say, praise the Lord. You divorce your wife, they say, you know what, praise the Lord, this is good. This is good. This is good. So you are surrounded by false prophets who are telling you everything you like to hear. Everything. You go and fornicate. They tell you, oh, fornication is nothing. The Christians are doing it and God is still blessing them. God is a merciful God. Didn't you hear the sermon? Grace for grace. There is even grace for fooling about. And then you are like, this is the word. These are the kind of teaching, teachers I want. And when you sit down and somebody is teaching you those lies and tell you no matter what you do, you go to heaven. Huh? And you are very happy. Then when it's offering time, they tell you can bring anything. God accepts anything. Kids will be in shock. Just bring it. Ah, this, this is the man of God. Not the kind who are always telling us to do impossible things. But I hear David, the man of God, say, I will not give to God a sacrifice that cost me nothing. Beware of Hananiah and Shemaiah. They will tell you what you want to hear. You will not study the whole thing. Wah, boom, wah, boom, wah, boom, wah, boom, wah, boom, wah, boom. The prophet knows you will fail. Then go to the man of God, pray for me. The exam is tomorrow. Have you studied? No. Then he said, brother, this battle is not yours to fight. Shall we pray? God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Hey, the Lord has fought your battles. You are going to pass this earlier. You really pass. Because you see, when you also fail, it's a passage to some place. So it's a pass. You, you are deceived. You hear the things you want to hear. Listen, proper prophets will make you uncomfortable sometimes. They will tell you things you don't want to hear. We have silenced all the prophets. And these days, you dare not, you dare not say things people don't want to hear. John the Baptist said it. They killed him. The man just said, this woman is not your wife. You have taken somebody's wife. They killed him. They killed him. Hananiah. He took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and broke it. Can you imagine this embarrassment? That a prophet believes God has spoken to him. They took the yoke and broke it. And Hananiah spake in presence of all the people saying, Thus saith the Lord. Everybody is saying God is talking to them. This is what God is saying. Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon from the neck of all the nations within the space of two full years and the prophet Jeremiah went his way as soon as he said that the prophet Jeremiah said okay but if you read the other portions of scripture Jeremiah told them he said you have broken the yoke of wood now God will put a yoke of iron on your necks <laughs> Jeremiah no ninyami God is still speaking. It will be impossible for Bogatanga and the Upper East region to forget one day that a prophet walked among them. I am not a prophet. 
I don't call myself a prophet, but they will remember all my words. They will remember. And Fountain Gate Chapel, you will remember my words forever. And anybody around me, you will remember my words forever. One day you will say, there was a prophet among us. There was a man of God among us. There was somebody who heard from God. We don't like the things he said. We don't like the things he talked about. We didn't like his style. But that does not negate the fact that God used him to speak to you. And I pray that you will be wise before it's too late. Now be very, be very careful. Be very careful. Be very careful. The man of God looks at you and says, Get thee behind me, Satan. That is Jesus talking to Peter. Then Hananiah will come to you and say, Did I hear him call you Satan? This is what I've been talking about. Leave that church and find somewhere else and go. And you two, you are following them because you want to hear what you want to hear. And Hananiah broke it. So I'm saying, judge a prophet by whether God sent him but not by whether he is saying what is agreeable what he is saying may not be agreeable but did God send him did God send him and God is constantly sending people and they are rising up early and sleeping late and talking to us that say the lord 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 we don't like what they are saying we trash it we don't like what they are saying we flush it down the toilet we don't like what we are saying we use our words and rubbish the whole thing we don't like what they are saying we cast it away but the time is coming the words that the true prophets of god they speak to you and you keep ignoring it and ignoring it and ignoring it and ignoring it a time will come you are following Hananiah to your own destruction you are following Shemaiah to your own destruction a time is coming the words of the true prophet will stand in judgment against you and I pray in the name of Jesus may God help us to hearken unto the voice of the prophets come and clap your hands and scream like I'm Listen. The prophet. The pretenders. There are people that pretend. Listen. Church members. Your prophet is your pastor. Forget about some, what somebody else is telling you in the church. The person may be the associate pastor. The person may be the head of the department. The person may be a committee head. That is not your shepherd. That is not your prophet. Your prophet is the pastor God put over your life. And Jesus said, my sheep, they hear my voice and they follow me. If you keep hearing another voice, you will destroy your life. If all of our members were listening to the voice of the shepherd, instead of the voice of other people, we would not be where we are. The only way you can listen to an associate pastor or a prayer warrior leader or a prophet living in a church is if he's saying the same thing the senior pastor is saying. But as soon as he keeps saying what is opposite of what the pastor is saying, forget about him. Beware of Hananiah and beware of Shemaiah. Save your soul. Save your soul. And there are some of you, in spite of sitting in our churches, you have your own prayer warriors somewhere. And when you are fornicating and you are misbehaving and committing all the adultery, and we tell you it's not good for you, instead of sitting around the front row of the church, you run away from the church and you are following others, and you have got prayer warriors and you've got prophets who speak to you in secret. 
you visit their shrines, you visit their consulting rooms, you visit the other places, you go and put an offering there, I brought you an offering, and then they are, they, are, they are massaging your ego, and they are massaging your sin, and they are making you sin more, and they, are, they don't know the manner of life you live, and even if they know it, they don't care. All they want is your money, all they want is your food, and you go there, and they massage you, and you go there, and they just they just pamper you and they tell you the things you want to hear ladies and gentlemen stop hearing the things you want to hear and hear what you must hear what you must hear will save you but what you want to hear will destroy your life and I pray right now there are many voices in the world and there are many teachers but there are few fathers I pray in the name of Jesus may you hear the word of the prophet the word that God has put in the mouth of the prophet who God has sent to you. We believe you've been blessed by this sermon. For inquiries, please call plus 233 267 plus 233 or send an email to info at godswordforus.com info at godswordforus.com